Hi everyone. Sorry about that. I'll just leave it a minute just to let people join from the other channel. Okay. okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming to join us all today. Sorry about the, the technical difficulties we had to start. Um, as a quick heads up, we will be recording this call to put on YouTube. So uh, if you don't want to be on the stream, please keep your camera off. Feel free not to speak on mic if you don't want to. I put the agenda into the community call channel, so you can view that if you want to follow along. Um, let's just start with a quick, raining now. quick round of introductions. It's uh, raining now. So I can start. Um, hi, I'm Joshua from Glasgow in Scotland. I'm the community lead for Ethereum.org. Um, feel free to ping me with any ideas you have for the community or any support needs, um, or if you want to collaborate in some way with the team. Um, Luca, would you like to go next? Hey everyone, my name is Luca. Um, I'm managing the Ethereum.org translation program. That's what I'm focusing most of my time on. So if you ever wanna chat translations, if you ever need some support, got any questions, feel free to reach out in the translations channel or DM me. Um, I guess, Paul, you wanna go ahead? Sure, good morning everyone. My name is Paul. Um, I am a Ethereum.org front-end developer. I'm out on the West Coast and also a bit of a professional rabbit hole inspector. Um, I am a big fan of things like PoApps as well as the staking community and protocol support. I'll pass it along to Corwin. Hey everyone, um, Corwin. I live in Alberta, Canada. Um, I'm a web developer on the Ethereum.org team, working on Ethereum.org. And yeah, if you guys ever have any technical questions when you get stuck working on um, features or anything that you're committing or contributing for Ethereum.org, feel free to reach out in the Discord. Um, we have a few contributing channels and stuff that I'm happy to help out in. Um, I guess Pablo, you can go next. Yep. Hello, guys. Hello, all. Uh, my name is Pablo. I'm from Argentina. Um, yeah, basically, I'm a front end developer uh, working for the Ethereum.org team. Uh, yeah, you can chat with me all things related to web development technologies and, and crypto, of course. I pass it to Sam, I guess. Hey everybody, um, awesome to see so many people here. Thanks for coming. Cool to see a bunch of familiar names. Um, my name's Sam. I live in Lake Tahoe, California. Um, I've been yeah working on Ethereum.org for two years and change now. Um, I'm a software developer and team lead here at the Ethereum.org squad. Um, you can see just a small group of us um, and really driven by the community of you folks who you know hundreds of code and content content contributors and thousands of translators that make make this project possible so thank you all um yeah love to chat all things ethereum my my username is sam Ajamin. you'll see me on discord and github um, and feel free to reach out if you ever want to get in touch okay thanks everyone um, I've just started sharing my screen, so if you want to have a look at that, if you're not following along with the agenda, feel free. Um, the last thing we really wanted to cover is this is obviously a community call for Ethereum.org, the website, and not so much a community call that represents the Ethereum network or protocol directly. Um, our team is supported by the Ethereum Foundation, but we don't even necessarily represent the views of the Ethereum Foundation itself. So just wanted to declare that up to start. With that in mind, where possible, we'll try to prioritize discussion around things like how 
the website right. ethereum.org can better create content to help developers build on ethereum or things like create better educational content to make ethereum more accessible and maybe not so much around things like um what is happening with sharding on ethereum for instance uh, with that being said many of us do live and breathe ethereum so we're happy to answer a, a wide range of questions if time allows so on this call as the agenda says um we'll quickly just run through some standout features that have been implemented by the community we'll go through our community hub and we'll give it a participation in the call quickly run over the translated acknowledgements page and with the time we've got at the end we'll do a quick q a so the first thing that i actually wanted to highlight was just some awesome things that we've added to the site recently as a result of some community contributions so i'm going to stop sharing my screen just now um, first up we've got corwin who's going to talk a little bit about zen mode and site search Real quick, if I may, this is Paul again. I want to hop in. Um, thank you for so many people being here. If we could, if everyone could just check their mics, do us a favor and try to make sure you're muted through this since we're all in a joint room like this. Much thanks. Awesome. So, yeah, as Josh said, we would like to highlight a few features that were merged um, quite recently for Ethereum.org that were standout features from um contributors in the community so one of the new ones that we merged that maybe some of you have used um was a zen mode toggle for the documentation section of ethereum.org and so for those that aren't familiar with what zen mode is um we have a toggle up in the top right here of that page when you toggle it it'll get rid of all the menus and navigation items for that web page It'll just focus you on the content um, for the doc documentation that's there. You can just have to hit that toggle to open it or turn it on, I guess. Um, and same thing to turn it back off. You can also hit the escape key to turn it off. Um, but yeah, this is a contribution made by, uh, and I'm probably going to butcher the name, but Hakimidan. Um, and very much appreciate this contribution to Ethereum.org. I'm sure it'll be very helpful for people who are going through the documentation, um, just being able to focus on the content. And one other feature I would like to highlight here is um, the shortcut focus for searching. So uh, you might have seen our search bar changed for desktop recently, where we added this um, slash into it. Basically, what that was highlighting is when you hit the slash on your keyboard, it'll auto focus onto that search, making it so you can search the website um, quicker without having to take your hands off the keyboard or the mouse or something like that. Um, and would like to thank, uh, again, I'll probably butcher the name, but S. Nikhil for that. Um, yeah, definitely appreciate these features, guys, and looking forward to highlighting more community features. I believe Paul has one that he is going to highlight, so I'll stop sharing my screen here. Sure, sure. I won't be necessarily sharing a screen. If you want to check out the thing I was going to look at, it's on ethereum.org homepage. You can scroll down to the bottom. Uh, so the homepage chart, this is something that uh, we set up close to closer to a year ago now, where it was just a very simple setup. We wanted to display some common metrics that people would look at related to the Ethereum ecosystem, give people a glance of what's going on on every given day. Um, this started off as just the simple value. Uh, and we had a contributor uh, who helped us out getting getting going with uh, charts on the page. This was Andrew Dofos. Thank you so much, Andrew, for helping out with that. Uh, I'd hopped in not too long. This was a couple months ago now. We're trying to get this over the edge after we got to kind of work to set these charts up. Again, try to get rid of keeping Mike's mute with folks. You know what, Joe? Um, so yes, apologies for the value locked in DeFi endpoint that you see here. This is something that's on our docket as well. We want to get that taken care of. We've been in touch with the folks over at DeFi Pulse uh, and may consider some some updates to this again in the future. But yeah, thank you, Andrew, for 
helping make this make this possible. Awesome. Yeah, Sam here. Thank you, Paul and Corwin. Just wanted to, yeah, again, give give a shout out to those contributors and really call out like you've seen us introduce ourselves, guys, like we're a team of of six people total right now. So we're a small team and we do product planning. We publish our roadmaps every quarter on GitHub for like features and um, new content that we plan to create. But like a lot of what happens on Ethereum.org is community driven. And I think these are three great examples of like people taking initiative to suggest new features that we hadn't even thought of and got this stuff added to the website. Um, so if you are looking to, yeah, get involved, build your resume, kind of build your reputation in the in the Ethereum space. This is this is a great way to do it. Um, we try to be as open as possible to any any suggestions that people come up with. Yeah. So thanks, Corwin, Paul, Sam. Yeah, as Sam was saying, these are really great examples of contributors advocating for features that we weren't actively focused on and now they're live then used by potentially millions of users so really great to see um, especially some improvements like the charts that we've wanted to do for a long time but just maybe didn't have the capacity to actually prioritize so yeah once again um, just a big thanks to Hakeem, Seth, Nikhil and Andrew for their contributions there. Yes, thank you, Talia. And of course, anybody else who we didn't necessarily highlight right here who's contributed, thank you so much. Yeah. So I'm now sharing my screen again. Um, next up, we have the community hub that we quickly want to discuss. Oh, what is this? Again, <laughs> Although this was completed by our team, much of the design work was completed by a contributor who was collaborating with us um, through Discord. So big thanks to Scott for all of his work on this. Um, so the motivation behind this page itself was that our old community page was just really a poorly organized bunch of lists. We wanted to create something that was both more visually interesting and more helpful to people to find their place within the community. Um, so we, we felt that one of the most important things to highlight with this was probably like the why of getting involved. Obviously it, it varies so greatly from person to person, but we found that like the key points here are just finding a place where you actually belong within Ethereum, being able to earn money and being able to make an impact. Um, was some just key important points we thought were worthy of highlighting. Um, next, we want to just highlight, we wanted um, just to highlight different ways to get involved. So we've got our four main call outs here. Uh, firstly, there's the online communities page. Well, for a while, we've wanted to grow out these resources um, that we listed, but the trouble with the original design was that it became very hard to just find what you were looking for. So we use some clever design tricks here, the use of icons, um, just to make the more information more scannable, added some nice spacing to it. And now you can see it's you now very easy just to navigate and find what you actually want. We also broke out this events section, which includes our events and meetups. Um, so to allow people to participate in events, conferences, etc. We wanted everything just to be easier to find. Before, what we listed was just a simple list of events. And again, this is really hard to navigate and users weren't given all the, the correct information. So in this new design, um, with each event, you can see it's very easy to find the dates of the events. Um, and we also explicitly state where the event's actually happening. So again, you can find an event near you uh, and one that will actually work for you. For the meetups, the main change we added was just to um, add search functionality to this. So, for example, if you live in, let's say, Vienna, you can just simply search and find a meetup and people near you who want to you know, chat Ethereum and talk about the recent developments. Uh, next iteration of this page will be, or, or this um, community hub rather, will be including a meetup guide so that we'll give you all the information you need about how to actually start a meetup. So, Keep your eye out for that. That should be coming out 
beginning of next year at some point, hopefully. Um, we've got this section for contributing to projects. So on this page, we um, list out ways that you can contribute based on your skill set. So let's say you land here and you are a non-technical person. You can go to the non-technical heading and just have a quick look through this. Um, and let's say you land on, you want to write content for Ethereum. Um, so we just provide you places that you can look so you can actively contribute. And whether it's writing or you want to organize meetups or perhaps you're a, a researcher and you want to just find out how to get involved with research, this is all contained in this one page rather than just being split, as we said before, in this community page, which was a bit of a, a mess of just different links. And on this page, we've obviously got a couple of more things, call outs to finding jobs in the ecosystem, getting a grant. If you um, are working on a project and you need funding, you should definitely check this page out. Contributing to Ethereum.org itself, that's obviously something that we would love to see. And if you need help with that, feel free to message me or anyone else in the team. Yeah, and the last thing, um, I'd like to cover on this is just our new support page. Um, so it starts out just very basically explaining the decentralized nature of Ethereum and that there is no official support for Ethereum, um, but directs users for places where they can get support. So whether that's support with their wallet, um, support building out decentralized applications on Ethereum, or even running their own nodes. And lastly, we have this section on like frequently asked support questions. So this is things like sending ETH to the wrong wallet. Um, we hope to grow this over time. So if you do look through this and you find things that you think we should ask, feel free to ping us or feel free to open an issue or a PR and we'll try and get different things added. Um, and again, um, obviously any feedback you have on this page, we'd love to hear about. So please post them in our Discord, preferably on our website general channel, or just reach out individually to a team member. So next up, the important part for many people here, the POAPs. Um, so if you aren't, you should check out my screen just now because it was where I'll be firstly sharing the passcode to get the POAP. So I'll quickly run through how to actually claim it before we do that. Um, if you go to any channel on our Discord server, you can see on the users list on the right hand pane that the POAP bot is right at the top. If you click on this bot and send a message, um, you'll just send the keyword to the POAP bot and the POAP bot will send you a link back with a claim link back for where you can get your POAP. Click on that, fill in your address, um, your wallet address and that will be your POAP claimed. So the passcode itself is, it's all community. So that's it's all community, all lowercase, no apostrophe. If you message that to the POAP bot, once again, if you just go on our Discord server, find the POAP bot at the top, send it a message with the passcode, it's all community. The bot will send you a message back and you can enter your wallet address to claim. So everybody will get it. Everyone uh, will get it. I'll, I'll leave it a sorry. minute or two to get. Sorry Hello. to interrupt. I'm just wondering uh, what is the POAP? I don't question. get it. Great yeah, question. So I can hop on that. Yeah. For anybody who hasn't actually experienced POAP, POAP stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol, which ultimately is just a, a, a set of where you can get NFTs, essentially, C721 minted for just participating in different things, various things, especially in the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, it was put together at ETH Denver in 19, if I believe. Uh, Patricio Worthalter is the guy who leads the project. Um, these are minted originally on XDAI, and they're minted for free on XDAI, which is side chain to Ethereum. If you want to pay the gas, you can easily click a button and migrate it over to mainnet. But ultimately, it's just a fun way to show that you participated in different things and to kind of build up a, a repertoire, if you will, like a little collection of POAPs as you attend different things uh, in the Ethereum space. 
They can be for virtual events like this one. They can also be they're all very prevalent at in real life events like conferences, for example. So if you haven't grabbed one yet, make this your first one. Go mess with Poet Bot and get started collecting them. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for clarifying, um, Paul, and thanks for asking the question. It's very easy to get wrapped up in the ecosystem and not remember that so many of these are quite abstract concepts. Um, so yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, I'll just leave it another 30 seconds or so just to let everyone claim, and then we'll move on. Yeah, and while people are claiming too, I'll step back uh, on that community page. I just wanted to point out to people that some of those things are, uh, I mean, again, everything's open source. Anybody, if, they, if you see something that's wrong, please, you know, feel free to raise it with us or go to GitHub and raise an issue. Also, the events page in particular is one that's kind of an ongoing thing. It needs to be updated over time. So if you're aware of any Ethereum events, if you hear of any particular big meetups or if there's conferences in your country, Please feel free to, like again, let us know or submit a PR to update that. It's all the events are basically held in one repo. And if you need help learning how to do that, you can message one of us or post in one of the channels. Great. Uh, I'm now going to stop sharing my screen, but you can still claim the Poat bot. Once again, the passcode is it's all community. If you just message that to the bot, we'll send you back a link. Always has been. So, as always has been. So um, next up, our translation lead Luca is just going to speak a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing to acknowledge just all this amazing work that our translators have been doing. Yeah, sure. Um, let me just share my screen. The anticipation. Yeah. Very excited to show everyone the, the new acknowledgements and the leaderboards we've been working on. Just a sec. Here we go. So <clears throat> this is something that we published recently it's a translator acknowledgement page or a contributor acknowledgement page more like it um this is dedicated to our translators the purpose here is to acknowledge and highlight all of our translators and uh, especially the ones who have made the biggest impact on the translation program um, this is the first iteration of this page, so it will probably develop over time. We are planning on adding other content to it. Um, but for now, in short, this contains our translator leaderboards where you can check out our top translators, most active translators for each for the last month, the last quarter. Um, and our most active all-time translators. This is, again, the first iteration of this leaderboard. So if, if you're a part of it, if you're listed on it and notice that something is off, um, feel free to reach out, let us know. It's, it's still a, a work in progress, but it is... Um, yeah, we're happy to be able to share this with you. Yeah, it's something so. that we've been working on for a while, especially thinking about ways how we can acknowledge our translators, given that there's thousands of them um, and the best ways to highlight them. So yeah, the first part of this is the leaderboard. The second part is this page, our translators page, where you can see all of the translators who have ever contributed to the translation program at all. Um, 
so if you've ever translated anything, you can find yourself on this page. And the last part is a section on POAPs, what they are, how you can claim them, some um, general tips on, you know, claiming POAPs with self-custody wallets as opposed to exchange wallets, stuff like that. Um, the POAPs are something that we're also keen to build on and be able to yeah. create new POAPs, um, basically build on this. And we're planning on, yeah, we're going to have new POAPs next year, probably going to have different criteria than there have been so far. So right now our translators can claim three different POAPs. The 2021 the 21 gen, uh, contributor POAP, which everyone can get, the 1K and the 10K POAPs for people who have translated 1,000 and 2,000 words, respectively. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the POAPs. Right now, we are working on a translator certificate as well that we will be adding to this page. Uh, if you've visited the translations channel in this past few days, you've probably seen the vote where we kind of ask the community which certificate they would like. It, that is it's for oh, community. Yes. The, so that is all in the work right now. We will be adding this to the acknowledgement page and yeah, like I said, thinking of other ways how we could highlight and acknowledge our translators moving forward. So if you've got any ideas, if there's anything that you would like to see, if there is a specific way how you uh, as a translator would like to be acknowledged or highlighted, feel free to reach out. Also, if you've got any feedback about this page at all, feel free to reach out. You can drop us a message in the translations channel, for example, or send me a DM and we will yeah, take your feedback and thoughts on board for the next iteration of this page and for the next, for all the, for all the content that we're planning to add moving forward. Um, yeah, at this point, I'd like to thank all of our contributors and in particular the translators in this case um, as Sam already mentioned a large part of ethereum.org is community a lot of the content on the website was contributed by the community and the translations themselves they're all community right so it's incredible to see that we've got 37 languages available on the website with at least five that we will be adding very soon. Um, yeah, so thank you for helping us make the website accessible to everyone, regardless of their language. That's what the purpose of the translation program is. If you want to get involved with the translations, send us a message in the translations channel, send me a DM. We can help you get onboarded and start translating if you're bilingual and want to get involved, want to contribute. Um, so that would be it for me. Thanks again. Beautiful. Thank you, Luca, for working on this. And yeah, once again, thank you to all the translators who are involved. So I'm going to take a second just to remind everyone that we've had to jump over to a voice channel. So if you do join in and you're not speaking, please make sure that you're on mute. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I heard it sounds like a couple of people are still trying to grab their POAP at the last moment. So once again, the POAP claim code is it's all community. Feel free to message the POAP bot and the bot will sort you out. I'm going to share my screen again. So we'd like to spend basically the rest of the time here, just going through questions from the community. We do have a list here of questions ready to go. Um, if you've already asked a question here, you don't have to ask it again, but firstly, we'd like to just open up the floor to everyone here. 
Um, if you've got a question, just feel free to unmute and speak up. Or if for any reason you don't feel comfortable with that, you can also use the, the community channel to chat as well. I heard someone on mute. Where are you? Do you have a question? Um, hi, I'm. Uh, my name is Eth Maxi Tard. Um, super big fan of the website. Um, amazing that there's only six of you. Um, my question was: um, uh, Now that Ethereum is switching to um, prioritize layer twos, and that's the future of Ethereum, I was wondering if we should have Ethereum.org focus more on onboarding users directly to layer two. For example, the wallets page um, having a much bigger emphasis on L2 compatible wallets. And I saw there was um, some issue related to that. But I feel like it's really important because there's so many complaints about gas fees now. Um, even though L2s like Arbitrum are already available, I feel like we should have a much bigger emphasis on on L2s on the website and, and just not onboard them to mainnet at all if possible. Yeah. Really great question. Um, I wonder if anyone else in the team wants to chime in on this, but I just want to firstly start by completely agreeing with you that the next stage is trying to get people directly on L2s. I think that truthfully that the infrastructure to do that has only really just matured in the last month or so. You know, you've got announcements from Binance and Coinbase getting people directly onto Arbitrum and other layer twos. Um, but yeah, I definitely think we could be doing some more work on that. Um, does anyone else in the team want to speak on this at all? I can chime in too. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you for raising the question. I, I also agree with that sentiment. Uh, and, and the fact that, yeah, these are still relatively new technologies. So it's, it has been tough to go full throttle into pushing these just yet because, like Josh said, there's not a lot of centralized support from the, you know, the different uh, exchanges that are out there. That number of new users are utilizing to get onboarded. Um, but I do agree that as that's rolled out, we have already kind of tell we want to update our wallet section. It's definitely a date at this point as far as features, things people are, are looking for from a uh, So this is definitely something that I would like to see pursued as we go forward. Uh, L2 support is going to be key going forward. And that's just too expensive. Yeah, and like to add to that a bit, we're looking to revamp the wallet section, um, and that is a filter that multi-chain support, which would include L2s in this case, um, is definitely a filter that looking to add in our wallet section for for that case that you're describing exactly, like being able to just onboard onto an L2 in a wallet is going to be very important. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking. Does anyone else want to ask anything? Or if not, we can jump into the, the questions we got during the week. Hey, hey Joshua, I, I had a quick one just on the, the website. Um, I, sure. I know we, I know we, it looks like we typically use Gitcoin for kind of feature bounties and things that are related or maybe peripheral to ETH org, but just wondering if you guys have thought about employing kind of community bounties. Um, Sorry, are you asking if for features on Ethereum.org if we yeah. work with like Gitcoin or? Yeah, um, or or use a I don't know if there's an Ethereum.org treasury that you guys manage, but just essentially tapping into that to kind of accelerate some features and have many hackathons or or things like that. Yeah, um, I'll let I'll let Sam speak to this um, because I know it's something that we've looked into in the past before my time. Um, so Sam, do you want to take this one? Sure. Yeah. Thank you for the question. And I mean, overall, like 
this is why we have these community calls because we want input like this. So great to hear there is potential interest is like Gitcoin, Gitcoin bounties is a great platform and something we've used, you know, years into the past to kind of just like generate interest and obviously incentivize people and actually like reward them for potential contributions to ethereum.org. So something we've done in the past, it, it, it was like a non-zero maintenance thing. And this was back when the team was basically just me and one other person. So we ended up kind of just like putting that off for now, I think largely just because of the maintenance. But I think that is something we could definitely reignite. Um, I feel like we tend to have some tension between, you know, having this open source website, this open source community where the large majority of people, right, are just completely volunteering their time. And like, it very much is an altruistic decision to like, give back to the Ethereum community, and pay it forward in a way with content and contributions to like, you know, help onboard the next, you know, million people into the Ethereum landscape. So we do hit a little bit of tension where we say, like, pay for certain features, but not for others you get a little bit of a slippery slope of like, hey, why not me? I've been contributing for months and I've never been paid. So in short, it's something we do think about of like, what is the best way to get people involved? And we do want to reward people who put in who put in the work. Um, so yeah, if, if bounties is something you'd like to see, um, I'd say, yeah, like get involved in our Discord, create issues. Um, this is something we could definitely build out and like potentially help um, create like a community run bounty program, I think would be something great to see in the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the specific mechanism I had in mind was just have people who either build on Ethereum, so dApps or layer twos or, or potentially venture capital funds, I suspect that have benefited from Ethereum, just provide um, kind of a matching mechanism um, via Gitcoin uh, and just have them say, hey, I'll match anyone in ETH org who wants to put up money to help fund the next big feature, like maybe a, a mobile feature, right, which would be pretty, pretty, uh, that'd be a pretty big undertaking um, and just have kind of a, the like a DAP treasury, uh, maybe from Uniswap or others that would match things or may, maybe, you know, do a two to one match. Um, I, I've just seen that work well in other nonprofits just to get a, potentially get around that problem you, you'd you highlighted. But yeah, fully, fully recognized money introduces the whole can of worms. Yeah, all good ideas. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. I um, want to keep this rolling. So if anyone doesn't have any other questions, we can jump into the community questions that we got beforehand. Um, feel free. So yeah, feel free to, after a question, interrupt if you've thought of something or want to ask a follow up or you've got something tangentially related. Um, first question that we've got in here is what fresh content as a team are you prioritizing from for Ethereum.org? And that's from Anonymous. Um, yeah, so thanks for your question. Good question. Um, so many important things that we'd love to produce content for. I think so, as Sam and Corwin already mentioned, one thing that we're working towards right now is a better, more refined wallet section of the site. At the moment, it's a bit overwhelming to users and users without any context so the ecosystem can get a bit lost. Um, obviously, we want to try and onboard people into layer twos as we already discussed. So that's one thing that's definitely high priority for the, the near term. Uh, Paul's also currently just adding finishing touches to a new page on running an Ethereum node, um, which goes into the, similar to the community page, the why of why you'd want to run a node and how you can actually do it, you know, the technical specs and things like that. Um, I'll, I'll get and post our roadmap in the chat, but our Q4, our Q4 roadmap highlights a lot of these things. Um, so you can have a look at that to see 
what we're currently thinking about. Um, and at the beginning of next year, we'll post a Q1 roadmap as well, which we encourage people to have input on. Um, worth noting on the roadmap itself, these are the thoughts of the team. Um, but we do try to enable anyone in the community who wishes to advocate for new content that we haven't thought about. Um, I suppose to open up a little bit, a meta question for anyone here is this, if there's any ideas for content or things that you'd like to see on the site that we should prioritize that we don't already have on the roadmap or we don't have on the site. Um, please speak up just now if you've got anything like that. Um, or if you don't want to, feel free to put it in the community call chat or even ping us afterwards about that. And I've um, I've posted a, a link to our roadmap in the chat if you're interested in checking that out. Okay, um, I'll keep this rolling then. So the next question is, is Ethereum secured or safe? Yesterday I've been cheated with my point to Ethereum. They said it was a giveaway for Ethereum started by the co-founder. That's from Satish. Um, wow, well, really sorry to hear about that. Um, does anyone in the team want to maybe speak to this a little bit? Yeah, good up. And on this. again, I'm also sorry to hear that that happened, Satish. Um, first off, as far as Ethereum security, I mean, this is this is a network that's extremely secure. Um, you know, run by a decentralized network of thousands of nodes. So, as far as the protocol of Ethereum, it's extremely secure, and with that comes what's called immutability, meaning you can't just go back and change things that have happened in the past. And when transactions occur, when they've been included in a block, they are essentially permanent. So in this case, it doesn't mean that everything is perfectly safe. You need to be very careful out there when it comes to interacting online or when it comes to these kind of these freebie type things where you say, oh, send some ETH this way and we'll send you twice as much back. That's known as an asymmetric giveaway amongst other terms, it's it's always a scam. Okay, so please stay safe out there. If you send your money to an address, there is no way you can get it back unless you know the person who owns that address or have private keys to it yourself. All right, so anytime you see these things, a very common scam, unfortunately, is YouTube channels can get taken over by hackers who break in people, maybe their account security wasn't great, a hacker gets in, they take control over it, and then they delete the entire channel but keep all the followers, and then they re they rebrand it essentially as something that looks legitimate, like it's run by the Ethereum Foundation, for example. Oh, Vitalik on stage talking. So he's talked at a lot of conferences. I mean, there's a lot of footage like that. It doesn't mean that like this is legit. So anytime you're posed with things like this, where you think, oh, I can get some free ETH if I just send my ETH, just don't uh, report those channels um, and stay away from them. Again, so sorry that, that you lost some ETH in that situation. Yeah, we um, recently released a page on staying safe in Ethereum and just avoiding scams in general. Uh, Corwin has posted a link to that in the community call chat. I'd honestly recommend everyone to read it. Um, when the team were researching content for this page, we learned a lot of valuable information, um, even with the experience a lot of us have. So it's probably pretty valuable regardless of, of your experience in crypto. But yeah, sorry to hear about that again. But just recommend everyone does their due diligence and tries their best to not fall for any scams like this. Um, moving along, we've got a couple of hiring questions. Are there any upcoming opportunities for Ethereum.org developers? And when designer hire? Um, I'll pass this one to Sam. He's largely been dealing with that. Yeah, happy to speak to this. Glad there's interest in these opportunities. So, yeah, um, in short, yes, upcoming opportunities for developers at Ethereum.org. Um, no official job post at this point in time. And I guess to take a step back again, you know, Ethereum.org, yeah, currently a small team, six of us working on this full time um, alongside, you know, the hundreds of you helping out. Um, we are supported by the Ethereum Foundation, which is great. The Ethereum Foundation, you know, has resources at its disposal. And I think more and more is recognizing just the importance of 
ethereum.org or just like educational ethereum content in general um having a place where you know anyone can contribute where we're hopefully providing a credibly neutral source of information to just help onboard people help people keep up to date with this whole ecosystem that just evolves incredibly rapidly um so we we do have an open um job posting um for a product designer um we've been fortunate to get like nearly a hundred applications so far for that um and in terms of timeline like if you have applied hopefully you've already heard back from us i know we've we've started our first uh round of interviews just this past week um Timing's kind of hard to estimate depending on people's schedules with the new year coming up. But I would say, yeah, um, by January or February, we're, we're looking to, to land a hire on that front. And for developers out there, yeah, no official job posting open. But I will say, and like speakers today, I think are a good testament of this, of like the, the first place we look to hire people is within our existing community and within existing contributors on ethereum.org. Um, Paul here could speak to, you know, he started as someone who just started opening PRs on GitHub and helping us knock out features and, um, and bugs. Um, over half, or I guess half the team here um, originally started as just open source contributors on GitHub or Crowdin. Or, or Discord. So great way to, to build a resume um, to get seen, whether that's eventually hired by, you know, the Ethereum.org team, or if you're just looking for, you know, a role within the ecosystem in general, I would say open source contributions are like such a big value add in terms of showing, showing what you're capable of. So definitely encourage you to get involved. I know sometimes it's hard to work for free, right? We're all busy. We need to make a living and support ourselves and our family and our friends. Um, but a great way to get into the space is to, yeah, just like solve problems, provide value. And I can assure you, you will get noticed. Yeah, we're kind of in a, in a space here where it's somewhat of a, you want a job, go out and take it. A lot of this stuff is open source. Our project is entirely open source. So please feel free to get involved and contribute. And like Sam said, we definitely are looking to those folks first. And yeah, like he said as well, that was how I joined the team last year, where I just basically was doing what Sam said. This guy in the GitHub repo and started participating in it every day um, and eventually got brought on. Um, this is something that I can really only mainly speak for Ethereum.org. I've seen it in a lot of the ecosystem as well. If you're looking to get involved, get started. Get in Discord, start talking to people, start contributing, and then recognize. So I encourage everyone to do that if you're interested in getting more involved. Yeah, and I can add to that too, that I got hired in the exact same way. I've just found the Discord, thought this is cool, started contributing, being active, and then a couple of months later, there was a role came up, applied, and <coughs> here we are today. So yeah, definitely if you're looking to get a role, not just Ethereum.org, but anywhere within the ecosystem, um, just as Paul put, just get involved in any way that you can. And if you're not sure how to, just ask because all of these communities are open source and are desperate for contributors to to step up and, and take things off their plate. So if you want to be that person, just ask how you can help. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. And I'd say like I'd say one thing at least I've noticed about the Ethereum space and a lot of projects and communities here is like oftentimes there is no official job posting, but if you find a way to like demonstrate um value and and show projects that like hey this thing is useful this thing you didn't even know you needed um i think luke on the call is a great example is right like we didn't actually have some person owning the translation program full time um and luca just you know hopped into our discord started sharing recommendations suggestions on how to improve the the program from an operational standpoint and like that eventually perked our ears up and we're like wait maybe we should hire someone to focus on this full time given it's you know thousands of contributors around the world really pushing this this project forward so i think a great example of 
if you identify a place where you can add value, um, there doesn't necessarily need to be an official job posting to apply for. And just to yeah. add to that a little bit, um, you don't have to be a developer to join this space and to make an impact and to add some value. Um, the space is growing at a rapid pace and people of all backgrounds are needed. So if you've got unique skills, if you've got some experience in um, yeah, anything pretty much like just get involved, join Discord channels, uh, start getting involved with the projects and add value in your own way. And yeah, as Paul and Joshua and myself are a testament to, you will get noticed. People notice when you are helping out, when you're adding value, when you are contributing. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. You don't have to strictly be a developer and a highly technical person to be able to make an impact in this space and to be able to get involved and get a job, basically. Yeah, for sure. But if I may, we're coming close to the hour here, so we want to try to speed things up. Um, if the others on the team don't mind, I want to try to wrap it, hit a couple of these questions. Um, yeah. In particular, we see some stuff about, I'll just kind of broadly touch on those questions about, you know, L2 rollups, what's going to happen after the merge, what's being done as far as research and everything. Um, I'm posting a invite right now to the ETH R&D Discord in the community call channel. This is something if anybody's curious about kind of more protocol level research and where things are going, I would definitely suggest checking that out. There's so some of the sources that we could post, like Cat Herders and the Ethereum blog, for example, these are good ways to stay up to date on what's going on at a broader level. Uh, and again, just to emphasize our team of six, we do not you know, dictate what's going on with the protocol. And we are not necessarily focused day to day on researching this stuff, but there are teams that are dedicated to this stuff. Um, proof of stake when, similarly, um, hopefully very soon. Uh, and I would, I would definitely follow along in the Ethereum discord there <laughs> yeah um to answer that current estimates are the end of by the end of q2 2022 but we have a, a page on our website where you can keep up to date um and i've also to add to paul's point about following along with r&d posted a link to tim biko's twitter um every two weeks after the old core devs call he posts an update on a quite succinct update on exactly what is happening with core development of the ethereum protocol so Definitely um, follow along with that if you're interested. Yeah, and there's another one here. I see after ETH2 is Ethereum complete. Do you still need to update the website? Um, so long story short, uh, there it'll never, f I mean, I don't see it being completely complete for a long, long time, honestly. This is a ever-changing industry and things are constantly being researched and learned and new, new approaches are being taken. Um, as far as do we still need to update the website? I would argue, yes, for quite some time, um, there is kind of this distant goal of potentially making this somewhat of a MDN or a Wikipedia type setup where people can self run the page. I'd say in short, this is something where we're going to continue to update the website for a long time. Yeah. And just to point out, our good friend Micah wouldn't be very happy with me if I didn't quickly explain that the ETH2 branding has been dropped and just that's mainly because it's no longer accurate an accurate representation of what's actually happening um so instead you can think of those upgrades that were formerly known as eve 2 as three separate consensus layer upgrades so we had the beacon chain which shipped december of last year um the merge which is when we moved to proof of stake and that should happen early to the middle of next year and then sharding which is estimated just now for 2023 yeah, and just to touch on this too, there's been a shift in the roadmap over time for any of you who may have been familiar with the phasing, you know, phase zero, phase one, phase two. Um, that's kind of been phased out, if you will, in favor of more of a roll-up centric roadmap, uh, which Vitalix talked about in the past, but mainly focuses on the fact that we have L2 technology here now, such as optimistic rollups and ZK rollups are in the pipeline. These things are going to drastically help scale Ethereum and are not necessarily uh, dependent on proof of stake. So those were emphasized right now, try to get the scaling going. We're going to try to transition to proof of stake, you know, as soon as possible. And in time, that layer 
and sharding that helps to even further expand the scalability of the network to stay in touch. Yeah. And just to answer one question related to that by Eric um, asks, are there objective downsides to adopting a role-up centric product roadmap? For what use cases does cent- decentralization matter most? Um, just to harp on again about Paul's point earlier is that these aren't really the things that we are the experts of. Uh, probably a question that's better suited for the researchers or the many, many unqualified philosophers in the space on Twitter. Um, so I point you to the R&D Discord for that. I know you're already heavily active there, but for anyone else who is keen to check that out, there's a lot of interesting conversations around things like this happening there. Um, and yeah, with that, I think we're pretty much at time. So I just like to once again like thank everyone for spending this hour with us and taking the time to get an update on what we've been working on and any questions that you've asked. Thanks again for anyone who's contributed to the website this year or is thinking of doing so, and all of our amazing translators as well. You um you are all a big part of what makes Ethereum.org so special. So I just want to call you out once more. Yes, thank you to everyone. And for those questions that we didn't get to, um, apologies if you have if these are burning questions. Feel free to ask in the chat, and we'll try to get back to you. But thanks everyone for coming. Huge turnout. I I love it. Yeah, thanks everyone for getting involved and for joining the call. Okay, we're going to call it that. Thanks again. Thanks everyone. You all have a nice rest of your day. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.